She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Are you just working or are you truly excelling? Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Today we're going to be talking about your career, your work life. One in three Americans have reported that, uh, according the American Psychology Association revealed that one in three employees are reporting that they feel stressed out, overworked, and underpaid. Are you one of those one in three Americans that feel that way? In fact, I'm pretty safe to say that in most of the Western part of the world, there's a lot of people that have those kinds of feelings. I've traveled all over Canada, Europe, uh, even Australia doing First Steps to Success, which is our training seminar that helps to equip you with current strategies and skill sets that work in the 21st century to help you grow in that career. Uh, not only that, but grow your finances and improve the relationships of those that you live with and those that you work with. You know, those that drive you crazy. <laughs> we all have some of those. Anyway, this show every single day is tackling uh, issues concerning our lives and success and how do we come out on the other side of struggles and sufferings as well as earthquakes that might bomb our job or might bomb our finances or even bomb our, our relationships with our spouse or significant other. Um, so today we're going to really have a focus on you improving in the marketplace and you becoming more valuable in the marketplace and the kind of issues maybe that you're dealing with that are stopping you. Uh, and, and if you are that person that feels like you are overworked and underpaid, what is the solution to that? So oftentimes, most people just complain. They just continuously complain about it, and they don't do anything about the circumstances. Others think leaving the job to try to find something else. You know, the grass is greener on the other side. There's some that actually believe in that, and therefore they never establish themselves in solid roots where they can actually bear good fruit. Um, we also know that, that it really doesn't, if you actually think that you're in a dead-end job, that's really largely because you have dead end thinking. And so I want to challenge your thinking today to help you grow in your career so that you can impact your life financially. And with those, with that impacted financial life, now you can put purpose to money. Now you could do something special or wonderful or something meaningful or something that actually brings some kind of purpose to your everyday life, purpose to the job, whether that's pushing papers, whether that is uh, pushing numbers, Whatever, you know, organizing warehouses or plunging toilets, cleaning cleaning hotel rooms, no matter what that is. And, and I know that we've got a, a wide and diverse audience here with the Danny Johnson Show from doctors and lawyers and people who deal with, uh, you know, with high levels of wealth and then all the way down to people who grew up like I did on welfare, completely ignorant to the things of money and work and, and completely ignorant to, to people, like not knowing how to work with people. So uh, everywhere we look, no matter what industry or company or job or title, people seem to be complaining that they don't make enough money. And that just seems also to be, for some, a habit, an absolute habit of just constantly complaining, constantly, hmm, I really want to use a word that's totally inappropriate, so I won't do it, but just complaining is just not the passionate word to use here. Do you understand what I'm, you know, witching over something, witching, but a different, anyway, just like, you know, just... Gosh, like, you know, a, a dog that just, you know, got a bone and, ah, 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 you know, they're just gnawing on that sucker. And people like to do that with their work, not in a positive way, but they just like to complain. And oh, I wish there was a word I could use right now. Do you know the word I'm trying to use right now? You know, you're just griping. That's not even a good word. You know what I'm saying? Forget it. It's a female dog. You know, that word just itchy. You know, it's just itchy situations. And it's just like, Arr. That is never going to make you more money. And that is never going to fix a situation if you feel like you're overworked and underpaid. But there are solutions. I'm excited that we're going to talk about what those solutions are today. So chances are you're one of one of the three. And either you are the two that are like, no, I, I feel like I'm being paid what my value is and I like where I'm at. Or you're that one that's, you know, the other way. So two things. We're going to talk about taking personal responsibility and getting yourself to the next level. Because the only way you can move up is if you take personal responsibility for your part in whatever's going on in the workplace. And then you can identify the things that need to be solved. And one of the things that need to be solved is not changing other people. You can't change the boss. You can't change your coworkers. You can't. There are some people that 
just don't get it. There really is. So you have to learn how to work within the ones that don't get it. Unless, of course, you're the boss. And after you've been patient and kind and enduring with somebody and helping to give them opportunity and they still are uh, not meeting deadlines, forgetting about things, not sticking to protocols, or um, just simply not getting the work done, well, then in that case, you know, if you are the boss or the owner, you have the liberty to, yeah, hold them tighter accountable. Unfortunately, those people teach you how to micromanage. And then eventually, if they can't quite come to the table and you have that, you know, come to Jesus meeting and they ain't getting it, they're going to do better seeking employment elsewhere. That That is part of the deal. So anyway, I want to hear from you. Let's evaluate where you are currently in your job and or your business. And are you where you want to be? Are you making the kind of money that you want to make? Are you satisfied in that profession? Or are you one of the three that feels like you're overworked and underpaid? So we're going up here to the phones. We've got Twana Phelps from Roseburg, Oregon. I know exactly where that's at. Beautiful area. Southern Oregon is gorgeous. Welcome, Twana, to the show. Hi there. How are you today? Good. So, yeah, are you one of, in one of the one out of three? Are you satisfied with the job? Do you feel like you're being paid your value? Well, so my story is kind of interesting. I was with a company, um, I'm 33, I was with a company for 12 years. Good job. And, um, you know, I worked um, after a few years into a management position. Good job. Loved my job. And um, when uh, our, our company was acquired by a large corporation, yeah. Um, I, you know, was grandfathered into the management position in a very different environment. Wow. Did not thrive there mm. at all. Um, mm. It just was a totally different environment. Yep. And um, what I was getting from my managers at the time was not growing me as a person. Mm. I was stressed out constantly. And uh, so I took a step back and I went back into a sales position just so I could have the opportunity to spend more time with my family and kind of regroup and then figure out what I wanted to do you know, moving forward. Well, when I did that, of course, they brought in other managers that always utilized me as a huge resource because I had been in management for six years. And right. um, what had happened is I, I turned around and, and got this giant head and uh, felt like, you know, the top dog, even though I wasn't, Wow. Uh, because I was helping the managers. And um, I got this very arrogant Mm. attitude about being better and then became very unteachable oh boy and uh, i know what happened next <laughs> well <laughs> as you can imagine um it didn't go well mm. and uh as different uh, managers came through because we were cycling to managers about once a year it got to the point where uh i just really kind of did my own thing i always was at the top of the board performance wise because i could do my job in my sleep but that arrogance definitely made me very yeah. hard to coach and yeah. uh, did not build good relationships with my managers. And yeah. when it came to a time where they could have defended me, they wouldn't. Uh, instead, I lost my job. Yeah, they wanted you out of there. Nobody likes yep. to work with arrogant people. Nobody does. Nope. Now, girl, your transparency is amazing. I'm really proud of you. But there's something else I want to uncover. Uh, you packed a lot in your story there. First of all, um, you know, you grew, you loved your job. And the first thing that came to my gut on that is people who love their job, it's a choice to love their job. Mm -hmm. It's all in how they approach it, how they look at it, and what they bring right. to the table. When you bring excellence and diligence, you feel good about what you're doing. And so people that love their job often excel and get promoted in their jobs. They don't stay stuck and they don't stay the same, but it's always the people who do not choose to love their job. They do not choose to find satisfaction. They don't choose to bring excellence and diligence into the marketplace. Those people stay stuck in a rut, get passed up again and again and again. And those people often are always looking for something else in the background. They're right. always entertaining other opportunities. And when they're always entertaining other opportunities, guess what? They're not committed. And if you're not committed, it's O-V-E-R. It's completely yeah. over. In fact, recently, um, I'm sorry I have to go here. I'm segueing just a little bit, but it all will make sense. I recently was in a discussion with somebody. I'm so glad we're talking about this. I was recently in a discussion with somebody, and I asked the question, um, so, you know, where I asked many people this question, and I most recently I've asked many people this question, and it, it is this. So where do you see yourself in the next five years? What do you see? Where do you see yourself with your position here? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What's your vision here? And the individual said to me, man, I haven't thought about that. 
And I just went, all right. And it made absolute perfect sense because the discussion I was about to have with the individual was not a good one. It was not, um, it wasn't a praise session. It was a, we're going to have to solve some problems here. And it all clicked for me because when someone doesn't have vision, they do not have ownership in what they're doing. And when they don't have ownership, there is no commitment. And where there is no commitment, there is no focus. Where there is no focus, there is no persistence. And where there is no persistence, there is no success. Right. It's impossible to succeed without those ingredients. So we have to have a vision for our career path. We have to have a vision. Is the vision that we're going to have one leg in and one leg out? Is the vision, well, as long as they treat me nice and as long as the business is good and as long as I look good here and as long as I get lots of recognition, then I will stay here? That's conditional commitment. And that's never going to bring success. But where somebody has vision for themselves in that company, then here comes ownership. Then here comes commitment. Then comes focus. Then comes persistence. Because in every job, in every business, in every market, There's going to be lean times and there's going to be hard times. There's going to be times where people are leaving left and right. There's going to be times when gossip flows in to a company and people choose to believe it. There's going to be times when everybody wants to quit. And there's going to be times where it's really, 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 really lean that something changes, something happens. And all of a sudden, the sales are not where they're supposed to be. People are not getting bonus the way that they wanted to get bonus for whatever the reason is. And it is what it is. And so without vision, without ownership, without commitment, without focus, when that thing starts to go like this, you know, when the, when the tide comes, right, and, and the winds change, that's when the weak leave. That's when the weak leave. That's how you know who has vision. That's how you know who has ownership. That's how you know who is committed. That's how you know who will succeed. And it's those who dig in some roots and they go with the storms that come to a business. Storms come to businesses. Storms come to marriages. Storms come to life. And so I'm really proud of you because what you actually revealed even early on, and you were young. Come on, 12 years you were with the same company, right? So in your 33 now, you were young. There's something else that was very powerful that I feel important to point out because your commitment started to falter early on. And that was the root of where it took you. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. No donkeys, no elephants, no blaming, and no excuses. Just real solutions that will really change things. That's real leadership. It's the Danny Johnson Show.
If you are not committed in your job, it's gonna show in your performance. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson, welcome to the show. We're talking about your success in your career today. Whenever there is somebody that loves their work, they show it, man, they show it. They show it with a smile that shows up on their face. They're, they bring excellence and diligence. They feel good about what it is that they're doing. And when somebody is not committed in their work. It also shows they can't focus. They don't meet deadlines. They don't pay attention to the details. When the, when, when the winds of change come, they're quick to start going, mm, let's go find something else to do. You know, they're quick to complain. But man, I'm telling you, the rare people in the marketplace today are those who have vision for their profession. And the vision could be nothing even related with the profession. It could be the vision that, you know what, I am going to love these people and I am gonna, I'm going to love our customers. I'm going to love my coworkers. I'm going to make sure that the, this place that we work is better since I've come to it. I'm going to make sure that everyone loves coming to this place. That You can be the receptionist and you can determine that. You really can. You, can. you can have a vision of impacting the lives of those that you work with every day. Unfortunately, most people, especially the 98 percenters who end up dead or dead broke, are those who are just, serve me. They see the job world as, serve me. What am I going to get? How much am I going to get paid? What are my bonuses going to be? When is my uh, vacation time? And when will I get recognized? It's such a jacked up situation and we can't figure out why people aren't succeeding. You aren't succeeding because your head's in the toilet. You gotta get it out. Twana was just sharing her story. She spent 12 years with a company. She's now 33. She was let go because of arrogance. But mind you, in her early days, she was absolutely committed and loved her job through a, um, yeah, a takeover, if you will. I mean, there was a merger that happened with her company and she got merged in, she was in management and Twana, the thing that, uh, that, that started to shake was you were actually promoted and didn't know it. And the new environment called for a higher level of character, higher level of flexibility, and deepening relationships and learning about the new company. Right. Versus, did you hold on to the old? Did you say, oh, I liked it better when? Oh, of course. Yep. Everyone did. Yeah. We lost almost our whole staff over the merger just because we, we did not, and I did not provide the leadership that we needed yep. during that time. Yeah. Um, and we were all thrown into a really, you know, difficult situation and very few of us survived the storm. Yeah. Yeah. And that could have, and now let me ask you this, the merger, was that actually in all reality, a better um, opportunity at the end of the day? Um, for our customers, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's for the customers, then the company uh, wants to keep and take really good care of those people. But here's right. what it is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So if it was better for the customers, that means it's better for the business. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Yeah. So, and here's what happens. And I love that you're called in today because somebody else might be going through that same thing. There's transitions that happen in companies, but when people cannot adapt to the change, when they cannot roll with it, when they cannot just embrace the new, instead they're holding on to the old, now here comes the complaints. Now here comes the whining. Now here comes the, I want to say, you know what word I want to say? Itchy. It kind of rhymes with itchy. <laughs> right? You're just itching. You know, you're just, oh gosh. I have to look up in the dictionary and find a different word that is as passionate as the word I want to use uh, because complaining doesn't fit, groaning doesn't work, griping doesn't work, itching doesn't work, but... Yeah, I no, wish there was it, another. It, word. it was it was full of that, and everybody was really miserable. And I was definitely not helping the situation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. when I decided to go back into sales, and I kind of washed my hands of the responsibility. Responsibility. Of yep. Um, my commitment to the company started to decrease. Yep. And like I said, with the managers that were coming through and utilizing me as a resource to help run the store. Um, that's when the arrogance started coming yeah. in yeah. and I'm like, wow. well, I know more than they do. Wow. They need me. Wow. You know, and arrogance at the end of the day is going to get fired. Nobody yeah. likes it. Nobody. I'm, I'm the best. Yeah. You know? Yep. Nobody I don't likes have any it. reason to follow you. No, none at all. Well, especially with your track record, right? Of, of, uh, you know, gosh, I want to use a word, but I shouldn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. But it, you were griping. You were feeding the frustration. You were feeding the complaints. You were feeding the the griping, the wrestling, the itching. 
<laughs> and I wasn't supportive of yeah. the, the vision that, that things have changed, you know. Yep. And, yep. Um, you know, it took a few years, but ultimately, Gosh, girl. you know, yeah. at the end of the day, mm. I don't work there anymore. You know what? All. Based on the fact that you knew what you knew, like you had been promoted so quickly and you were even managing other managers and training up other managers, you could have been a vice president with the right attitude. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Is your company going through a transition, a merger, or a buyout? Stay tuned to find out how you can come out better and even get promoted next on The Danny Johnson Show. I just heard this amazing story. One of our clients had written us telling us that they had used job domination and unlimited success and has absolutely exploded their career. He said, Danny, I don't know where I'd be today without job domination and unlimited success. Listen, do you want more recognition from your coworkers? Do you want to be recommended to people all over the world? Do you want to be somebody that is highly sought after? Listen, if you're in a dead-end place where this gentleman found himself but then learned new strategies and changed everything in his work life, and obviously this has resulted in higher bonuses and pay raises, you're next. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of Job Domination right now. 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880. Job Domination. That's what you need. It's time for you to dominate the job market and break through the rut that you're in. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Do you realize that you live in a land of opportunity? You really do. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. This is the show where we redefine success. We knock the status quo of success right in the teeth because the status quo of success says, serve me. The status quo of success says, look at me. I want, I want, I want, I want it how I want it. We're living our life according to Burger King. I want my Whopper my way. That is not life. You will never have long lasting success with that kind of a mindset. We've started this show today about talking about your career and talking about dis job satisfaction versus dissatisfaction. And I want you to know that you really are living in the land of opportunity. We just had a woman from Roseburg, uh, Oregon, call in and share her story about how she got fired. And, and, and there's humility in this woman. She knows, you know, Twana, you should have been fired. You absolutely know that you were not com committed and you know that you didn't, uh, you didn't roll with the changes, with the merger that had come to play. Now, I want to ask you a question, uh, Twana. I want to know, what could you have done differently? And where do you think you would be today had you played this card a little differently? Um, if I had um, honored my manager as you know, their position and helps to, you know, guide the ship, you know, with the influence that I had with the team yep. uh, in the correct direction instead of resist the change and, yes. you know, um, cause waves in, that shouldn't have been caused. Um, I believe that they would have probably fought for my job. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, somebody did fight for your job when the merger happened. They found you to be so valuable. They brought you in. Right. So, but I'm saying like, you know, rather than, um, rather than, do you think, because the path that you were on, right, you were being promoted, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Do you think that you would have continued if you had the right attitude and you solved, you didn't feed the complaints, but instead you disarmed them and you sold the vision of the new company. You sold where we were going and look, guys, we have so much opportunity here. We look at all the history that we have and we can totally rock this thing. And all we got to do is we're going to learn their systems. We're going to learn their way of doing business. And I'm sure that we're going to succeed with that. This merger would not have happened unless there was something better underway. That's a vision that could have been casted to your people. And you would have raised up leadership with that. I believe wholeheartedly because, first of all, and here's why too, look at the character you have to have the humility of the confession that you're making. You're not blaming anybody. You're taking personal right. responsibility for where you screwed up and where you started to no longer have commitment there. And then that was the downward spindle and then you get fired. But I believe you probably would have ended up a district manager or someone like you with that mindset you had in the beginning. Could have been somebody who could work themselves up into a vice president position. Oh, yeah. And, and, and if I had in, in seven years ago had that, that knowledge and that ability and that hum, humbleness yeah. then, uh, you're right. I totally would be in a totally different position than I am right now. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Twana, I'm really proud of you. Thank you so much for sharing because somebody needed to hear that today. Somebody really needed to hear that today. And not only that, you needed to say it today because it's a reminder of don't make that mistake again. Arrogance is never going to result in a, in a, in a better paying situation. Never. 
it never works out the way. P do you like working with arrogant people? Uh, no. Do I like working with arrogant people? I will not. I will not work with arrogant people. Will not. I don't care how much somebody wants to pay me for business consulting. My fees are $1,000 an hour. Uh, sorry. If you're arrogant, we ain't talking. Real simple. We've got uh, Aquila Rodriguez from Walnut, California. Is that Walnut Creek or Walnut, California? Walnut, California. Walnut, California. Where's that at? Uh, 25 miles from Los Angeles. Oh, gotcha. Awesome. I grew up over there. Okay, so what about you? Where, are you one of those that's dissatisfied? Boy, wasn't Tuana's story powerful? <laughs> yes, it was. Very. Eye-opening, isn't it? All right, so what about you? Where are you at with this whole career thing? Are you just working or are you truly excelling? Um, I'm just working, trying to get to truly excelling. I've been with my company for, we're going, this would be my second year. Okay. And I really feel like I just started. Okay. I work with a person who's a control freak. She feels she has the answers for everything and she's not afraid to tell you. And she feels that if she's not here, then everything stops. And I feel like she thrives off of that. Hmm. But she complains when she has to travel, when she needs to go places. I was hired to assist and to travel for her, which I don't mind. But instead, she books it for herself. Okay. So it's like, where do I fit in? Where do you fit in? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, are you, okay, first of all, because you said you are trying to excelling, but you're just working. Mm -hmm. What would you say the commitment level is of this woman that you're calling a control freak? She's devoted to the company. Oh, yeah. So on a scale of one I to mean, ten, on a scale of one right to ten. Now, like, we are on spring break, and her thing is, uh, I feel bad because this is her telling me, you know, I should be at home spending a day with my kids for spring break, but I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. No work. Mm -hmm. So she is uh, overcommitted, would you say? Yes. Okay. And so someone that's trying to excel, where would you say your commitment level is to the job? Uh, well, within... Let's be honest. This, before two weeks, I didn't have a commitment level. Yep. I was I'm ready to leave. Yep. Okay, so now watch. So the person that is totally devoted, and in my opinion, she's out of balance with her devotion, all right? But someone who's a control freak and someone who goes the extra mile with their job, all that kind of stuff, and it could be that she uses her job to medicate the problems that she has in the house, meaning she doesn't feel good as a mother. She doesn't. She feels like a failure as a wife. Um, she's got problems that she's just trying to run away from. And sometimes workaholic that's women, true. That's yeah, that's the reality. And so they don't know how to handle it. They're good in business. They can achieve things. They get recognized for achieving things. They feel valued out there. She feels devalued in the home. So to be honest with you, have you ever felt that way before? What, as a control freak? As a mother. As a, yes, because I kind of feel like that now. Ah, okay. So, which means perhaps you can identify with this woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Going through stuff at home, like, you know, with the finances, and I feel like I'm failing everybody at home. Right. And that's exactly how your boss feels every day. And the only thing she can control, because she can't control her kids, she can't control her husband, everything's spun out of control. The only thing she can control is her work. Work. All right. So let me just give you a different perspective. When somebody is highly committed, someone else that is not, it's like oil and water. There's no trust. And ha can you tell when someone's not committed? Yes. Yeah. You absolutely can tell. Tell me what non-committed looks like. No interest. Mm-hmm. You're not interested. You don't care if you're late to work. Mm -hmm. Care if you're, you know, you're not doing the job. Yep. Uh, is and someone that's, that's not me. <laughs> you know, I work five minutes and I'm always late. <laughs> okay, look now. Now I knew this was the case. I was going to come right out and say it, but I wanted to see, hear you say it. I knew right from the get go. You call her a control freak. She's a micromanager, but you have taught her how to manage you. And so there's a right. lack of trust between the two of you. But you actually, the two of you actually have something in common. Your home life sucks right now, and you feel devalued as a mom and a wife, and you feel like you're failing everybody. You both have the same feelings, and that's the bridge. And so if you can come from her perspective, you can understand her better, 
You can help to fill her needs and you two will have the tightest, closest relationship and you're going to get promoted and she will call you the most diligent, the most dependable person she's ever had the chance to work with. And she won't micromanage you anymore. People who are micromanaged teach the manager how to manage them. Doesn't come, it doesn't, that's how it happens. It's when we miss the deadlines, when we don't show up late. And you said it yourself, like, what does non-commitment look like? I show up late to work. Uh, non-commitment looks, I don't care about my work. Non-commitment looks like I don't finish my work. I don't even want to be there. She knows that, which makes her go, crap, I have to work now 10 extra hours and I can't trust her to go do the traveling thing that I want to do. I can't trust her to finish this, so I have to do it. Now we have resentment and bitterness between the two parties. So you got a choice to make. Here's where you're at. In life, we have opportunities to get promoted, but see, and to get raises. In order to get a raise, in order to get promoted, let's just analyze the word itself, okay? Akila, look at the word, to get a raise, raise. What does, that, what does that mean we have to do? You have to do the work. You have to raise your value. You have to raise your commitment. You have to raise your work ethic. You have to raise the quality of work in which you are delivering. You have to raise your commitment to deadlines and filling the needs of your boss. Hmm. That's how you get a raise. <laughs> and so, right. and that's how you get promoted. You find a need and fill it. So her need and the way to fill it with her, and I have somebody uh, on my team that you know I had to recently have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with because attention to detail is super important to me personally, super important to me. And when I give very specific instructions and deadlines are really important to me and somebody overseeing that is, it's really important to me. And there's somebody that's in a position that that's not important to them at all. And it's like, uh, this is gonna cause a war. And so it's either you have to decide whether or not you wanna work that in environment or, and whether or not you want to overcome and bring excellence and diligence and detail here, or you might want to find something else to do. Because I don't want this to end in a bad relationship. I'm held accountable by God and how I treat people. And I want to treat you well. And if we're going to work well together, we're going to have to know how to fill needs here. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up Press play and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. What's holding you back from the life you wish you could have? Is it your job, your spouse, your upbringing, your skin color, your education, your economy? If you answered yes to any of these, you need to listen carefully right now. This is The Danny Johnson Show. In order for us to have the level of success that we want, we have got to be people that are aware of our surroundings and aware of our actions, aware of our decisions and how we approach things, especially in the workplace. Because if we are approaching the workplace from a non-committed place, we are going to end up fired, let go, or stuck in a rut and never get promoted. And you're here listening to The Danny Johnson Show every day because you want to succeed, not because you want to be a failure. You want to grow. You want to achieve. You want, you want to define success for you and live it according to what you feel is in your heart about how to live that out. And one of the ways that I think emulates success is how we approach our work. And we work with people, right? And money comes from people and people decide whether or not we get promoted, whether or not we, they wanna do business with us, whether or not they wanna continue with us. Well, so far in today's show, we have found one that has confessed that she was completely arrogant, lost her job because of that. The other thing that she confessed was that she was not a part of the solution, but she was a part of a problem. Through a merger, she complained with everybody else, even though she was the manager leading a team, she didn't cast vision of them about, come on, guys, we can do this. Yes, we're going to have to learn new systems. It's all right. We, it's 
in us. We can do this and we will succeed and we will have the best store out of all of the stores that have gone through this merger. We're going to shine. She could have sold that vision, but instead she kept selling what she didn't like. She kept holding on to the past, the old ways of the things that were done instead of embracing the new and excelling in it. And she ended up fired because of it. So the second one was, I have a control freak boss. You got to learn to see a different side. If you think you have a control freak boss, you taught them that that's what they need to be in order for you to get your job done. And that is you. That is all on you. And when you take personal responsibility for your work and you start looking from other perspectives and you bring excellence and diligence, you bring yes detail and you're paying attention to deadlines and you're following through. I've got somebody on my team that I don't ever have to ask her questions ever. It's amazing. She runs our events department. We've been together for 23 years. Um, I can put something in her lap and it's done. I don't ever have to think about it again. I don't have to worry about it. There's very rarely ever do I ever have to follow up. Ever. Not only that, there might be one or two decisions that she makes and she, she manages an entire department that does millions of dollars every single year in sales. And one or two decisions in a whole year that I would go, mm, I'm not sure I would have made that decision, but it all works out fine. And so that's the kind of person you want to be. Jennifer Ratchford is that kind of a person, that she's dependable. Dependability has huge value in the marketplace. And we, we have to decide every day, hold on a second here, who has employed me? And what do they require of me? And how, what needs do they have that I can fill? Because what happens is you can come to work and you can decide that you got your own list of priorities of what you want to do and how you want to do it. And those list of priorities might have nothing to do at all with the priorities of what you were asked to do. And so when you don't fulfill the priorities of what's been asked and you don't fulfill it with the right attitude, I'd be glad to, I'm happy to serve. And sometimes you have to say that with, you know, gritting your teeth because some days you don't feel it. But as long as you are saying it, you're telling your body how your body should feel. You're telling your mind how your mind should feel. And you should step out in faith, feeling that way and leading that way, because pretty soon you're going to create momentum and you will love it. You'll move through the hard stuff. You'll move through the stuff that drives you crazy. Okay. So when, when you're not keeping the priorities of the boss or the leader or the manager or the owner, when you're not keeping those priorities in, in mind and the details they've asked you to do, you're hurting your reputation. And either you're going to have a reputation of being dependable or undependable. And it creates a lot of stress when you're not dependable. So again, we're, we're talking about the one in three Americans that say that they're overworked and underpaid and they're totally dissatisfied. Want to know if you're one of those? We've got Stacy Porter from Pennsylvania. Stacy, where do you fall into the mix? I am underpaid and overworked. I am a contractor now. I, what happened is I was downsized by the company, mm -hmm. and then they called me back, but as a contractor, mm -hmm. and which and um, I'm trying to become a full time back a full time employee. Right. I am told that I'm a hard worker. I do. I, I'm an overworker. I'm sort of like one of the people you described. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as lo loyalty and dedication, mm -hmm. and um, I guess I get. Two different things. Um, some coworkers say I, I do a lot and I should get paid more and I should be recognized more. And then I get the other coworker that says, "You just want to do everything." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, let me let me ask you um, about those coworkers who are putting that into your ear. How does that make you feel when coworkers are telling you you're not getting paid enough and you work too much? How does it make you feel about your boss? Well, I I really like my boss. Um, but how does it make you feel? Does it start? Your boss. Does it make you doubt that you're being valued? Stacy, it's a simple answer. Yes, yes. They plant a seed of doubt. And they plant the oh, seed. Okay. Yes. 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 It makes you start yes. to doubt the devotion your boss has for you. It makes you start to doubt the value that they see in you. It makes you start to doubt that you're getting enough recognition. And that might not even be any of your emotions. That might not be any of the feelings that you have at all. And yet when somebody starts saying this kind of stuff, because again, they're looking from their perspective, not yes. 
not the reality of the truth. So they're putting that on you and that starts to, to cause you to question your working relationship as a contractor with the company. Right. Right? So does that help yeah. your performance or does that hurt your performance? I guess it could hurt it because then in the back of your mind, you have that in the back of your mind. So yes, it could, could hurt, hurt your perception. Absolutely. It changes your perception yeah. and therefore it will change your performance eventually. That seed is going to come to the fullness of fruition. I'd be, I'd be changing who you're talking to. I would be right. far away from those coworkers that are complaining through you because that's what they're doing. Right. They're complaining okay. through you. They're, they're recruiting a cloud of witnesses to say all of us are overworked. All of us are underpaid. And not everybody feels that way. So exactly. Those who feel blessed to have that job. That's, I, I am definitely blessed. <laughs> Seriously. What about, what about the ones that say I am doing too much and, you know, um, Oh, that, you know, I don't know. What business is it of theirs of what you do? Right, right, right. And who are you allowing to influence you? Right, right. It's a matter of you have an agreement and an arrangement with the boss. And as a contractor, you have the ability to negotiate your contract. That's what you have. Exactly. And you two yeah. came to a fair agreement. And it's nobody else's business. If I were you, right. I would be influencing those coworkers and saying, you know what? I got to tell you something. I am very happy about my job and I love what yeah. I get to do. And I love working with you need to answer those accusations because that's what they are. You need to answer those accusations and those seeds of doubt, that 98% mentality. You need to answer that with truth. You know what? I am really blessed to have a job in today's world, in today's market. I am really blessed that I have the working relationship that I have with these people. And I think you need to consider how blessed you are as well. I got to go back to work. <laughs> you got to bring value, not complaints. And you don't want to lend your ear to complainers. You don't want to lend your exactly. ear to those that are never satisfied. Those kind of people end up losing their jobs. They really, really do. No question. Stacey, thank you so much for bringing that perspective. I appreciate you. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Stay right here for more of The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880 for Time Secrets. For families in Santa Pancha, Nicaragua, life is filled with fear and struggle. They don't have enough food for their kids, clean water is hard to find, and they're living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel on top of mining tunnels that could explode and sink at any moment. But a miracle is in the making, and you can be a part of transforming this village. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha to see how you can help. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org, and click on Santa Pancha. So what's keeping you stuck? It's time to get it out of your way for good. This is The Danny Johnson Show. That last segment just makes me go, oh, man, I want to line up every one of those people that have jobs that are complaining about their jobs and, pl and planning complaints and good people like Stacy Porter from Pennsylvania, planning complaints inside of her that makes her start questioning whether or not she is being valued by the company. Oh, I want to just, okay, you know, so Stacy, I know you're still listening. This is what I want you to do. I want you to write a thank you card to your boss. I want you to write a thank you card to all of the people that are even above her and say, you know what? You didn't have to offer me this contract and I am so 
grateful to you. I am so blessed that you are still keeping an income in my household. And I am very thank you. My family thanks you. I thank you. And I've enjoyed working with you. And if there's anything else that I can do to improve, to serve you better, if there's any other needs that you have, if there's if there's something that you would like to see me change, please tell me what it is because I want to do everything I can to help this company grow, to help your job get easier and better. And I want to make sure that I do all that I can to show you how committed I am to this vision. That's the card that needs to be written to your manager and everybody else that is above her. And I would also write a card about your manager to the ones that are above her. Now we're talking making a difference. Now we're talking showing yourself more valuable. Hmm. Susie Snail, who's Facebooking while she's working and complaining that she's working too hard or she's watching YouTube videos when she's supposed to be doing paperwork. Come on, I see it all the time even in my office. Hello, Joe, give me a break. Either you're gonna be a 98 percenter or you're gonna be a two percenter. And the two percenter makes an impact every day wherever they go. And if they swallow a stupid pill, hopefully someone's gonna Heimlich that sucker out of them and put them right back on track. Ugh. I hate negative Nellies. Oh, that was really bad. I dislike them very strongly. They don't realize the, the power that they have. Okay, so listen. Let's get on a more positive note as we end today's program. Speaking of which, these skills that we were talking about today are called employeepreneur skills. They're highlighted in this book, First Steps to Wealth. Do you have a copy? I'll give you one, okay? Not a handout, but a hand up. Employeepreneur, that's what you wanna be. You wanna bring high value in the marketplace. There's so many great strategies in this book on how to get promoted. Simple little things that we talked about today. So call this number, 866-760-8255. Again, that's 866-760-8255. Ask for Steven. He'd be happy to serve you and get you your copy of First Steps to Wealth. Uh, by the way, ebook. Totally free right now. If you want the physical copy, you pay the shipping and handling. I'll pay for the $15 book. Fair enough. Lastly, listen, you know that we here at dannyjohnson.com, we believe in taking 100% of the profits of our business and helping the extreme poor, educating them, putting them into business, sustaining them through not only education, but also giving them a business. We're working on a project where we're taking extreme poverty, people that have shelters, not homes, and we're building them a brand new home in a brand new safe area and creating an entire neighborhood for those who have no food, they have no water, they have no skills, and we're gonna give them skills. You wanna join us in that project? Go to kingsransom.org. Again, that's that's kingsransom.org and put purpose to the money that you're earning every day and watch great satisfaction rise up in your heart. Can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day. This has been the Danny Johnson Show. Did you hear that last segment? Do you know someone else who needs to hear it? Go to dannyjohnson.com, find today's show and share it online. Hi, welcome to the Danny Johnson YouTube channel. We're super excited to have you here. And every single week, we're gonna make sure that you get awesome videos for your business, career, making more money, saving money, annihilating your debt, as well as helping you to handle those really tough problems that you have with people at home, as well as at work, and taking those really good relationships you already have and causing them to flourish and grow. All you have to do is click that subscribe button right down here. Click that and you'll be subscribed to an amazing community of people as well as some great videos that will help to improve your life. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe now would be good. Just click it. I know you can see it. It's somewhere down here. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.